Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for generosity. Five to ten minutes is a lot of time, but unfortunately not enough even to bite at uh, some problems of contemporary world, world which is in focus of this 14th forum, a uh, world which is uh, known for being overwhelmed, overloaded, overthrown uh, with problems. Whatever problems I try to handle here will be at the expense of others and uh, actually, contrary to my intentions, undermining their significance. Uh, as far as the world we want to live in, well, I can't tell you much, really, because first of all, in 60 years of dealing with sociology, studying sociology, I never learned any skills of prophesizing the future, and uh, I wouldn't dare to attempt it now at your expense. And secondly, at the end of my uh, over uh, unforgi unforgivably long life, um, the only definition of good society uh, which I arrived at is that the good society is society which believes that it is not good enough. Beyond that, I have very little to offer. And therefore, I, uh, uh, I would rather a little bit switch the emphasis in the title of this conference and uh, speak not so much about the world we want to live in as about the world we must live in, simply because we don't have any other world to escape from this one to, to it. Uh, it goes back to a very old uh, 19th century quotations. Professor Scruton introduced, I will continue. There was Karl Marx also in 19th century who said that people make their history but not under conditions of their choice. <clears throat> Whenever I hear it, uh, I, uh, it reminds me uh, another very perceptive statement, uh, this time made by Irishmen, an Irish joke which says about, which told, tells us about a driver uh, who's stopping his car and asking a passerby, uh, I'm sorry sir, could you please tell me how can I get from here to Dublin? And the passerby stopped, scratches his head, and after a while answers, uh, well, dear sir, if I were going to Dublin, I wouldn't start from here. Now, that is the problem. We are, unfortunately, <laughs> starting from here. And uh, we have no other point to start. And uh, what I would like to convey to you, which constitutes my major worry at the moment, I am trying to, I am trying to resolve, but uh, so far without much effect, uh, and that is uh, that um, uh, our world from which we start, our road to Dublin, whatever Dublin means here, uh, is strong on challenges and urgent tasks, tasks which can be only called unputdownable, unputoffable, uh, and very short on means. I think that uh, uh, if the 20th century was the era when people were asking the question, what is to be done, I think 21st century increasingly will be the era in which people will be asking the question, who is going to do it? So there is a discrepancy between the task, between the goals, and the means at our disposal, means which were created, ladies and gentlemen, by our ancestors who created nation state and supplied it and armed it with a lot of uh, extremely important uh, institutions. Uh, Professor Scruton uh, told us quite a lot about it, uh, which were made to the measure of nation state. And as far as the nation state is concerned, that was the very you know, peak, very top uh, of the idea of self-government, sovereignty, being at home, chez soi, and so on, so on. And uh, above all, nation state was reliable, impeccable means of collective action, means of achieving collective social 
goals. That was believed beyond the left and right. Both left and right believed that if you either defend Winter Palace or assault and capture Winter Palace, you will change history. Uh, nation state is able to implement the ideas which are promoted. Ideas might differ, but all of them were concentrated on it. Why it was so? It was so, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, uh, nation state was considered to be, and it tried to be, and to great extent it was for quite a long time in history, the home, the, uh, the homestead of uh, uh, power and politics. Uh, party, uh, power and politics, marriage made in heaven, which no human can tear apart, uh, there to stay, their natural abode, forever from now. Uh, marriage of power and politics, power means ability to do things, Politics means ability to direct this activity of doing things, uh, telling what things are to be done. Now, what's happening today, ladies and gentlemen, is, uh, well, separation, uh, no doubt, but also prospect of divorce between power and politics, power evaporating in a cyber cyberspace uh, and uh, uh, manifesting itself in what I called the negative, negative globalization. Negative in the sense that uh, it applies to all aspects of social life which have one thing in common, namely uh, the uh, sapping, uh, eroding, ignoring the local custom, local needs, local represented will of population, uh, rules of the game, and so on, who are uh, using, exploiting their ex exquisite mobility can actually always go by pressing a button on the keyboard to places which are more hospitable to their own interest. Negative globalization uh, embraces, ladies and gentlemen, powers like finances, capitals, uh, trade, information, um, criminality, weapon uh, trade, uh, drug traffic, um, uh, terrorism, and so on. Uh, it's not followed by positive globalization. We don't have in the glo on the global scale uh, anything remotely reminiscent to the effectiveness of the instruments of political control over power, of expression of popular will, representation, jurisdiction, and things like that, which were developed and still are frozen at the level of the nation state. In the light of this discrepancy, whenever I hear the concept like international community, uh, I cry and laugh at the same time. There's nothing like that. We haven't started even building it. We haven't started even building it. Our problems are already global, but we have only local means to deal with them. And they are blatantly inadequate, blatantly inadequate to the task. Hence the question which I suggest will constitute uh, probably contents of life of so many young people here in, the, in this room, not mine, Fortunately, I, I am already over on the other side, but uh, that will probably be the life and death question for 21st uh, century. Who is going to do it? That will be roughly the question. Well, uh, I think my five to ten minutes are already uh, uh, crossed over, um, so just uh, uh, yeah, that's, an easy, that, that's an easy way of little. getting out of having to answer huh? the question. That's an easy way of ha trying to get out of answering the question. So yeah. I'll give you more minutes to answer the question, no, no, who just, is here to uh, do it. I, I, I'm concluding, I'm concluding, really. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, I don't have the answer to this question. 
I can only, I can only suggest some words of uh, well, encouragement. Uh, you all know about Edward Lawrence and his uh, tremendous discovery that even smallest, smallest, tiniest, negligible uh, events may, given time, given distance, develop into huge, uh, shocking uh, catastrophes. Um, it was uh, the Edward Lawrence discovery um, known and in this, in this you know, allegory of uh, um, butterfly in Beijing flapping its wings and changing the itinerary of hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico uh, six months later. Uh, now, this uh, uh, idea was received with horror because it went against the grain of our beliefs that uh, we can actually have the full knowledge sooner or later theory of everything we can know, we can predict, we can make, if necessary, with our technology, the world predictable and so on. But I suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, that in this discovery uh, of uh, Edward Lawrence, there is a, a glimmer of hope as well, and tremendously important. Look, one butterfly, what it can do? Tremendously, um, tremendous amount of things, you know, small, don't, don't neglect small moves, don't neglect, neglect uh, minority, local, marginal developments. Um, well, uh, the, fair, the taken, taking of this first uh, winter palace, as you know, was reported by the Times, I don't remember, on 8th or 10th um, uh, page of the issue as a minor event, not deserving much attention. Our imagination goes much, much beyond our ability of doing things and spoiling things. Um, so uh, we have in our human history recently quite a few butterflies who change history. Uh, and the President Havel is one of them, really. And uh, just uh, what he has done single-handedly is something which uh, all our crowded forums still can only dream of accomplishing. So uh, the only advice I can, I can give you, ladies and gentlemen, is look at the butterflies. They are many colored. They are very numerous, fortunately. And let's help them to flap their wings. <laughs>